Hi, my name is David O'Dell. Today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, add an RV parking spot to the front of your house. I'm going to come in real handy because I know it's uh, difficult to park an RV anywhere else. It's costly and it's hard to do the maintenance. So basically I've got uh, the same guy I always use, Earth Basics, Danny out of uh, Buena Park he's uh, brought the uh, super tent over here and I have a little uh, bobcat skidster that I'm gonna remove the dirt with and, and grass this concrete here that I'm doing since he's got a, a pretty large uh, motor home I'm going uh, five to six inches deep thickness of the concrete and I'm going with half inch rebar on 18 inch centers for this one as I was digging out I ran into a big old stump that I wasn't aware of this tractor just didn't have what it took to get out so I had to go get a, a stump grinder basically and keep grinding started hacking it down I got it down well below uh, concrete and uh, it came out pretty quickly with the stump grinder and what we had to do is reroute a few sprinklers because these these uh, he had them on the other other edge and they're all spraying in and now the lawn is a little bit smaller so we're running a new line along the edge of the concrete with uh, new sprinkler heads the sprinkler heads i use are um, zero to 360 degree adjustables and usually a maximum of 10 15 foot spray distance it's all adjustable you can adjust the uh, spray radius you can adjust the distance so that's why I normally get these it's real simple you don't have to figure out quarters halves this that you just get the 0 to 360 and make them however however spray you like like them to spray then on the other side we're leaving a little space over here about two foot area along that vinyl fence for a uh, planter base, I think he's gonna put some uh, bushes or some plants in there of some sort. So I uh, modified the sprinkler system a little bit, and I put a uh, bubbler system along that fence. It's just basically a drip hose. It has uh, emitters built into the hose. I think they're about every one foot. So I doubled it up because this uh, this bubbler is gonna be connected to the sprinkler, so. I normally like to run bubblers a little bit longer than sprinkler heads so what I did is I ran the uh, bubblers I doubled it and ran it in a full circle so we get as much water as possible in uh, duration the sprinkler duration we're adding a little walkway to get from the RV to the existing walkway or front entry we ran into a lot of pipes in this one. It was uh, modified many times. It was modified once when they put the vinyl fence in to get around the post and what have you. So we kind of made it a little bit more uh, simple and uh, got rid of a lot of fittings. We just made some nice straight lines. You can see the heads there. And we found there's a sewer clean out right there, which is going to come in real handy for the uh, motorhome. This lawn is uh, pretty built up over the years from uh, you know adding fertilizer and the dead grass and what have you. It's, it's a lot higher than it should be at this point. So our concrete's probably going to be a little bit lower than the grass, and they may have to trim, uh, taper it in, or just remove uh, the a portion of the lawn to get it down to the right level. Uh, we had to go there was a pipe going under the sidewalk that that was the sprinkler that goes to the uh, parkway so we had to reconnect that we had a lot of fittings in this area we just made it a little simpler and got rid of a bunch of T's and 90's and a lot of Mickey Mouse stuff they had in there that we ran into And what we're gonna do is we're gonna there's the drip hose I was talking about earlier with the self emitters in it so I doubled it up so we can dump as much water quickly as possible try to keep up 
with the uh, sprinkler heads that it's um, connected with. Right now, I'm just uh, kind of flushing the system. That one head I had off, just uh, blow some of the dirt and excess glue out before it clogged the uh, spray heads. Now I'm putting the heads on after I blew the lines clear, and I'm just going to make some final adjustments on them. And then I'll move on to the next phase, getting the form board in and compaction and rewire. You notice I had two holes down there by the city sidewalk. That's where the old vinyl fence was, vinyl post. So I removed that. What we're going to do, these are four inch posts for the vinyl fence that you can see right there. I'm going to put five inch vinyl post sleeves in the same locations they were previously before we decided with this RV pad in. And we'll just slip in some four inches into the five inch and this so it'll be a removable fence basically now we're compacting it just a simple plate compactor we did quite a bit of uh, disturbing of the native soil here we're trying to remove that stump especially so we recompacted it Now this is half inch rebar on 18 inch centers. Normally I don't go that, I usually go 3 eighths for just regular basic uh, cars. This is motor home, so it's gonna be heavier. And I just beefed it up a little bit. So I got the half inch rebar, I got fiber mesh, I'm gonna mix into the concrete. And uh, I'm going five inches and I'm going uh, 3000 PSI. 3 threw some dobies under this one. It's a little bit harder to uh, lift the uh, half inch rebar up when it's on 18 inch centers versus lifting two foot center, three eighths bar. So I got dobies on this one, so it'll, be, it'll make it a little bit easier pouring it out. I kind of crowned this form to try to meet the grass as close as possible. It's still a little bit high, but not a whole lot of modifications to do on that lawn to, to bring it in flush with the top of concrete so the top of concrete is at the top of that 2x4 you can see the space underneath the 2 4 and that's how you know that it's definitely uh, thicker than your basics One truckload was able to do this. I think I believe I got eight and a half yards on this one. I uh, basically ran out at the end, which I usually like to have at least a half a yard extra, but uh, it ran a little thick, so we basically had to uh, blow the whole line out just to get enough concrete in the, in the job. There's the five inch post, vinyl post I put in. They go down about two feet. So we're gonna end up cutting them off later flush. Then the four inch will just slide right in there, in and out as needed for the RV access. I left them up high just so the concrete would go into them at this point. I'll just cut them off later. So it's all laid down, now we're just kind of getting it, smoothing it out, running a three, uh, half inch edger, a walking edger with no, no handle on it, looks like. Uh, now the handle goes on. He's gonna run that half inch up along there, give it a nice radius on the edge. We've bull floated all this already. I kind of bull floated as I stopped about every 20 feet uh, on the rod board and then broke off. Laid it down real quick with a uh, three and a half foot magnesium bull float. Now we're getting the joints in here. 
basically on the joints I run uh, basically a cutter which goes about two two inches deep which gets all your rock out of the way then I come back through with just a uh, three-quarter half round and then the rocks are already separated so it guarantees you a crack at that location A lot of times what happens is if you just run your basic three-quarter on a special a five inch or six inch concrete you'll have a joint in there and then right underneath the joint all the rock are still jammed together across the uh, joint and uh, it'll crack right next to the joint so I run the two inch just to break the rock all the way down and then you can run you can run a half three-quarter whatever you like on top of that you know so you don't have a big gaping deep deep joint but it still gets a job done because you've separated the rock. This is a funny float in action. It's kind of nice to whip up the cream. It's a hand float with poles on it basically. And this is fiberglass. We're just kind of whipping up the cream. This concrete went off rather fast. 3000 PSI and it was, seemed uh, a little rich. Richer than the normal more like a 3250 or something but anyway it was uh, really nice to finish nice and creamy And basically we'll just keep moving on down section to section with this funny float and I'll probably end up coming behind it with a uh, funny trowel which is a hand trowel with holes on it here's my 20 20 inch trowel let's kind of knock it down pretty quickly with that minimal strokes probably had to go over this about three four times before we got it to where we liked it and it was hard enough to put the final broom on it Here's your funny trowel in action. This shows you all the steps and all the different tools you're going to need to do pretty much any size concrete job. Follow these steps, uh, you should do pretty well. Now we're just cleaning up the joints, keeping them open, keeping them straight and clean. No rock pockets. Here's your final broom finish. A uh, horsehair broom will give you a uh, go with a uh, horsehair broom for a, a finer finish. Went with a, a little rougher one on this. Basically all nylon. 
here's your concrete cure it was a hot day I think start to finish we were done in two and a half hours from the pour to the broom to the uh, concrete cure about two and a half hours so it went off pretty quick it was a hot pretty hot day I'm uh, putting concrete cure on there to slow it down and less likelihood of getting uh, shrinkage cracks the water will uh, be trapped in the concrete and not, not evaporate as quickly so you won't get shrinkage cracks basically that's what the concrete cure does it dries clear it goes on white and dries clear here's your finished product um, you can see this is the same day I've already taken the forms off um, did it all in one day and you can see where it dried clear up here in the shade however it's taking a little bit longer to cl go clear this uh, concrete cure but it will eventually 12 seconds so anyway uh, thank you for watching my video if you have any questions or comments feel free to call me or leave a comment my name is David Odell my phone number is 714-454-7637